I'm sure all of you are doing really great. And today we are going to start off a very new different, a new topic. So leadership of language, the communication, the art of is. I hope you understood what I read. I'll read it again. Leadership of language, the is communication of the art is introduction. So this is the introduction of what we are going to study today. Did it make sense? I'm sure it did not make sense for a minute. It caught your it caught your eyes and you were probably confused of what I'm going to teach you. So let's start off again. Good morning to one and all and hope you are doing really good. The art of communication is the language of leadership. This is a quote given by James Humus. Now, what does it mean? This introduction or let's say this quote is going to lead us into the fourth element of directing which means it is communication so in our previous sessions we had completed all the other elements of directing that supervision motivation leadership and the fourth one is communication so what are we going to study under the terminology called communication so what are what are people saying communication is the art it's a language of leadership that is what the author or james is trying to say so communication is a language of leadership that means your communication is very important and it needs to be very clear so let's start off a session i'm sure you know how important communication is by now if i give you a jumbled sentence if it doesn't make sense you would say excuse me i'm not able to understand what you're telling me what is communication okay and why why is communication the element of directing now let's say communication plays a very important role in the success of a manager how much of a professional knowledge and intelligence a manager possesses he becomes very immaterial if he does he is not able to communicate effectively with his subordinates and this creates misunderstanding with everybody around so that is the reason directing abilities of a manager mainly depends upon his communication skills so a manager should be very good in his communication so that's the reason the fourth element of directing is communication so the topics that we are going to be learning today is only going to be the topics which has the arrow marker if you can actually see here i have put an arrow marker so that it's easy for you to understand so we are going to be learning the meaning okay we are going to be learning the elements the importance and formal and informal communication so there are four topics that you're going to be studying today so the next session i will be teaching you barriers of communication and the importance of improving communication effectively so if you look at the marks wise meaning of communication will come for a two marker elements of communication will also come for a two marker importance of communication may come for a four marker or may come for a two marker i have not written it here but probably you will be able to understand if i tell you it may come for a two marker or for a four marker then the next one is formal and informal communication under that you have the types of formal and the types of uh, informal the meaning of formal and informal is usually asked and the types are it's for coming from the new syllabus so it comes for one marker or two marker so let's move on into uh, how this communication has come into existence okay so the word communication is derived from a latin word which means communis and what is communication referred to it it's coming from a latin word which means communis which means common okay common understanding so common understanding means what communication is defined in different ways generally it is understood as a process of exchange of ideas facts views feelings etc so this word called common is something that you need to know because it me it's coming from a latin word called communis which means common and people have different way of expressing or communicating it's communicating some people will uh, let's say they will share out their feelings some people will tell their ideas 
and some people will tell out what is there in their mind so every person is different and they communicate also differently so coming down to the meaning of the word communication it is a success communication plays a key role in the success of a manager i told you if a manager is not able to communicate properly with his uh, subordinates it creates a lot of communi uh, misunderstandings or miscommunication and it becomes very difficult for the subordinates to understand what the manager is speaking so it should be that for a good relationship between the leader uh, between the manager and the subordinates good communication should be there example i'll tell you in one of the organization where i was working i had a team leader who was only speaking in his mother tongue influence he probably i don't want to uh, tell you what was his mother tongue but let me tell you he was from a different state and his mother tongue influence that mother tongue influence means most of uh, we all have our own mother tongue let's say let's say i am a punjabi so my uh, mother tongue is going to be hindi so what happens i'm so used to speaking in hindi the hindi that every time i speak in english i will have the accent of hindi okay so for karnataka people let's say i'm a kannadigar and i'm i'm having i'm having a very strong accent of speaking kannada because all the time i'm only communicating in kannada so what is happening when i am speaking english i am i am uh, this kannada accent is coming into my english accent so people will not be able to understand properly what i'm trying to communicate okay so that is again a to communication so that is the reason they say when you communicate you please ensure that you are clear and that's the key role to all managers so the next one is the elements of communication process now you have seven elements of communication uh seven elements of communication process now there is a small diagram i have inserted for you how exactly communication works now let's say i am the sender and you are the receiver okay i am sending a message telling that let's see here this is our phone what is the medium we are using we are using the medium called the phone okay so that is the electronic gadget which we are actually using uh, so that we can send and receive our message so this phone is called as the media okay again i'll repeat this phone is called as the media i'm writing it here as m so that you'll understand it's a media so what am i doing i'm the sender you are the receiver i'm sending a message to you telling that movie starts at 9 can you drive us i'm asking you so probably i'm sitting in a let's say in one of the room and you are probably in a market so i am sending the message to you and for me to send the message to you i am using a media that's a phone through the internet okay so this message which i'm sending it to you usually through the internet and through the uh, connections uh, it will be binary digits 0 to 1 so it gets converted into words okay so that is how uh, things get converted through a software or through a means so i am sending a message to you you are receiving the message so the sender is sending a message to the receiver the receiver is receiving the message and she or he is encoding the me message not encoding decoding the message so what am i doing i am encoding the message that means what i am typing on my phone telling that movie starts at 9 can you drive us so this message is not in english this message in the server gets typed in 0 1 binary language it gets typed in so in the server once the message reaches the server whatever i have sent it gets converted into english language in simple terms i'm teaching you it gets converted in english language and through this phone message through your internet protocol it is sent and the person the receiver receives the message so i have encoded the message into 0 and 1 through the phone it is in, uh, encoded into english proper sentences are framed it is sent to the receiver the receiver is receiving the message once the receiver receives the message through a media that is this phone is called a media through the media the receiver is decoding the message decoding means whatever codes whatever symbols the zero and one and all is being used it gets decoded into english language okay so this receiver is reading the message as movie starts at 9 can you drive us so she what does she say what does she says she says yes 
will be there by 8.30. That means what she's saying, I'll be there by 8.30 to pick you up. Okay, so this is called as communication process. There is a person called as a sender. There is a, per a person called as a receiver. Then there is a message what they are typing. So this is the message what they are typing. This is a third one. Then there's the fourth one called as the media. That is an internet uh, protocol which you're using or your phone that you're using. Then the fifth one is decoding. Let me write here decoding. Okay. So the receiver is decoding the message. Okay. And then she's reading the message. She's understanding the message. And then she sends a feedback. So this is called as the feedback what she is sending. Yes, I'm sure you're able to understand. So the eighth one is called as noise. What is this noise? Any hindrance that the person is, uh, let's say, when I want to send you a message, there's a lot of noise in between. Let's say it's a poor uh, telephone connection or the receiver. When I'm speaking to the receiver, the re person is very distracted. He is not she he or she is not listening to me over the phone call. The person is very busy cooking. So only half of the message the person is listening. So when the person is messaging me again, uh, only half of the information is what has been received. So same thing. So the uh, the message is not very complete. So this is how the elements of communication process works. So I'm sure you're able to understand. So first one is sender. Second one is, uh, let's say, medium. That is your phone. Okay. So the third one is the receiver. Fourth one is the message. Fifth one is the feedback. And sixth one is encoding. And last one is decoding. See, I've gone as per the square, but if you follow the process, the process goes different. First one is sender. Second one is the message. Third one is encoding. Fourth one is media. Fifth one is decoding. Sixth is receiving. Then the receiver gives a feedback. And in between both of them, there should not be any noise. Noise means hindrance for communication. So this is your notes. Every PPT, I'm ensuring to put your notes so that anytime we, if you miss any points or sentences, it's easy for you to look into your PPT. So who is the sender? It's the person who conveys the message through thoughts, ideas. Who's, what's the message? Message are nothing but feelings, suggestions or whatever you are typing. Encoding means what? The message from 0 to 1, it's getting converted into proper message into English. Okay? See, so yeah, symbols such as words and gestures. Media is what? It is the phone that you are using, okay? Or probably you're using a letter or probably you're right typing a me email. So what are probably you're doing a video call? All this is your phone that you're using to do all this particular process. Decoding means what? Converting and uh, encoding the symbol of the sender. That means the minute the message is sent, button is pressed, it will receive, it will reach the server. From the server, it will get converted. That's what is called decoding. Receiver is person who receives the message from the sender. And feedback is nothing but though all those actions of the receiver. Decoding is nothing but the receiver decodes the message, okay, of the uh, sender. Then feedback is nothing but person is able to understand whatever message is being sent. And he again retypes a message. Now, all the hindrances and obstruction, hindrances means all the problems which come in between. Probably when you're sending a message, half the message is sent. It's an incomplete message. So, ambiguous, uh, ambiguous symbols, that means symbols that where you don't understand what is the entire meaning of it. Like hashtag, not everybody understands the meaning of hashtag. Okay, or a poor phone, uh, telephone connection, inattentive receiver, then faulty decoding. That means the... The way you are um, reading the message is not really right. Okay, so that all this will come under the elements involved in the communication process. If you actually see uh, the next topic that in this particular topic, that's elements of communication process, probably the numbering was not right, but it is okay. You can probably change the numbering, but the notes is really perfect. Now, what is the importance of communication? Why is communication important? Because if a person is not able to communicate properly, then he cannot be an effective leader because communication is the base for a leader, leader to lead his team. So that is why communication is very, very important. Just an example, random example I'll give you. When you're speaking to anyone over the phone, if the lines are not very clear, will you be able to understand what the other person is telling? Very simple, no. 
hundred times you will tell your friend i cannot hear you what you are speaking i really cannot understand there is some noise and disturbance when you are speaking and she'll be saying can you hear me can you hear me there is network problem so what happens the, the communication is very very important okay so why is communication very important now in an organization it's not all the time that we are speaking over the phone we are usually speaking face to face communication is what is happening either it is face to face communication or it is written communication through emails so what are they saying communication is very important for the subordinates as well as for the leaders okay now what is the importance of communication again have included pictures for your understanding to become more easy okay now it acts the first point is it acts as basis of coordination what is coordination coordination is nothing but it integrates it brings everybody together like i told you in my previous uh, explanations i had a manager who was very much uh, considerate and he, he was very good in terms of how he, whenever uh, the minute he used to enter he used to always come and ask us uh, how are you all doing are you all doing really well how are you all this morning is there any problem that you all are facing so what is it it doesn't mean that you have to just come and talk it is he is asking us how we are it's bringing unity among the team members so what is it communication is very important for coordination for the team to be strong so the next thing is it provides coordination among various departments that means what the every department activity is different so it unites every department activity as one if i want any help i will go to another department and i will ask them can you please help me i want this email uh, let's say asking for the payment status so what is it it commun communication is the only uh, element which is integrate integrating all the teams together okay so the next one is it helps in smooth working flow smooth working of an enterprise means what because your communication is clear there is all the organizational interactions depend on the communication which is done by the manager he is the person who brings in the human efficiency of the employees so what what are they saying from the birth of the organization the uh, communication plays a very important role so that the organization can continue further now boost the moral whose moral is communication boosting the the way the manager speaks to the employees the moral of the employees that means the way he motivates the employees the moral of the employees grows greater for the organ organization and they want to do really well so that they can achieve the goals now acts as a base of decision making who it helps in the process of decision making it provides needed information for decision making that means in the in its absence that means in the absence of communication it may not be possible for the manager to take any meaningful deci decisions that means let's say, say for example the employee is not come in for uh, for the past 3 to 4 days in the organization so the manager every time wants to keep calling the employee and finding out but the employee is cutting the call so what is happening based on null communication that means there is no communication happening between the manager and the uh, employee so can any decisions be taken no no decisions cannot be taken so only when the manager and the employee are speaking together and telling each other this is what the problem i'm facing this is what is happening please can you take into considerations i don't want to do a night shift i want to do a morning shift so communication is a very base for any decisions to be taken in the organization by a manager then it increases managerial efficiency how is it increasing managerial efficiency because when the manager is able to communicate efficiently to the, with the, uh, that's to the employees the manager is able to convey convey or convince the employees to achieve their goals their targets and he is also able to issue instructions that means tell them where they are going wrong what where they have to become little perfect so so that they can achieve their goals even more efficiently so this helps to achieve managerial efficiency the employees are also agreeing to what the manager is telling like let's say for example your manager doesn't speak english he speaks all the time his own mother tongue so what is happening will you be able to understand what he is talking no he is not an efficient manager so 
communication is very important for him to become an efficient manager and efficiently lead his team the sixth one is it promotes cooperation and industrial peace now how is it helping in the cooperation of industrial peace reason because if there there will not be any conflicts between the manager and the team members because the manager is communicating correctly whatever he is seeing and the employees are also able to understand that the manager is telling us the right thing so this is ensuring team peace within the organization it establishes effective leadership how is it affecting uh, if it's providing leadership again he is communicating really well he is speaking up to the point he is observing the employees so there is no wrong things that he he is communicating anything to the employees he is checking the employees how they are how they are working the skill efficiency and only then he is becoming he is proving himself to become a leader so this again is your explanation i have put for you i have also underlined the explanation anyway you have any doubts you can go through this explanation here okay see acts as a basis for coordination it's a base of coordination among various departments like what i have told you helps in smooth working of an enterprise it helps in a smooth and unrestricted working of an enterprise why because there's always interactions that's happening between the team and the management then it helps for decision making that means the manager is able to decide whether it's a yes whether it's a no why because he is able to communicate and ask his team members for feedback then it increases managerial efficiency he is quick in taking his own decisions why because he is very efficient enough by allocating his jobs properly to the employees then promotes cooperation and industrial peace peace that means what he is a prudent management that means he is acting wise he knows how to decide things he knows how to keep peace within his employees he establish effective leadership he he helps to influence his subordinates by how by pro, by efficiently speaking to them properly so the employees are also not uh, telling that oh he is not a person who doesn't know how to communicate he knows how to communicate so this in turn boosts the morale of the employees so that they are able to achieve their goal now the last topic that we are going to be studying today is formal versus informal communication now what is a formal communication what is an informal communication now formal communication with the help of the diagram you know that everybody is following the rules and regulations everybody see always know formal communication is something where there's lot of rules regulations which has been put and every employee has to follow those ru those rules and regulations but informal communication is giving birth within a formal communication that means it's all these informal groups that is formed within a formal communication example i'll give you you are working let's say in an organization let's say abc now the rules of the organization is you are going to log in at 9 o'clock you're going to leave at 6 o'clock if there's any leaves that you take in between there are going to be salary deductions in a month you can only take one leave now none of you know each other in the organization but what is informal communication you form groups in the organization that means in your own formal or in the own organization that you're working that is abc limited you start forming groups of your friends you start saying hi hello this is what's my name can i be friend with you you start becoming close friends so what is it you start forming groups in your formal organization so the this and it leads to a lot of gossip it leads to a lot of information breakthroughs so all this is what is called as informal communication okay now what is formal communication formal communication it follows lines of authority very important for you to understand and know what is formal communication it follows lines of authority and management that means if i say top level from the top level information goes to the middle level from the middle level information flows to the lower level this lines of authority cannot be broken 
okay so how are they formally uh, telling things to the employees through reports through meetings they will have meetings they will have sessions with uh, subordinates and employees and they will speak to them or either they try type a letter and they send it to them or an email through an email they send it so there are lines of authorities which is not broken in a formal communication okay so the same thing i have put here there are three types of communication under formal communication that is downward that means what message flows downwards through the chain of command that means from the middle level or from the top level information is coming downward to the lower level management okay that's what is called downward now what is upward messages flow upward through the chain of command that is from employees to the boss so this is called as upward communication okay but all this is formally happening as per the lines example let's say i am an employee above me i have a team leader above the team leader there is a manager so if there is a problem who do i go to yes i'll directly go to the team leader after the team leader the team leader will pass the information to the manager i cannot break the lines of authority and directly i cannot go to the manager so messages flow laterally between people on the same rank that means from the lower level the information is passed to another lower level example i am an employee above me or in my group itself i have a subject matter expert so the message is passing from me to the subject matter expert or from the subject matter expert to me so both of us are in the lower level that is what is called as horizontal formal communication okay now there are different ways of formal communication the, these will come for one marker or two marker so please ensure that you only know the diagram how exactly it works and one word mean how exactly it works now what is a single chain please know there are no formal lines that is broken here the levels are strictly followed rules and regulations are strictly followed so what is this single chain please learn these diagrams they will come for one marker and two markers now what is this uh, single chain single chain is nothing but information flows from a to b b to c c to d and d to e okay now in a wheel from a only information will go to b from a it will go to c from a it will go to d and from a it will go to e then in a circular means what it moves in a circular each person can communicate with his adjoining two persons that means what if a is telling to b a will tell it to e if e is telling it to d e will discuss with a if d is telling to c d will discuss with e so adjoining whoever is here this in this way circular moment the information will flow then what is free flow free flow means in this network each person can communicate with others freely that means i am working in a team of 5 whatever information is told to be my by my team leader that information i can tell anyone in my group that is what is called as free flow now inverted v means what here the employee is allowed to communicate with his immediate supervisor as well as his supervisor supervisor that means what if i am in the lower level okay i want to tell information i will tell to the middle level okay then morning in the morning shift my manager is seeing me my manager says hey what happened i heard something i can even tell the information to my manager okay so i can pass the information to my team leader i can pass the information to my manager so this automatically becomes an inverted v okay so the next one is informal communication now here also you need to know the meaning and you need to know the forms of informal communication this again will come for a two marker and the forms will again come for one or two markers now here the formal lines of authority is broken okay that is how informal communication occurs when people come together and they talk about their working i told you right you all work together you form friends at end of the day you all become family who is working together why because you're working together in a company for 5 years so all those people who you are working with become your own family 
all your co-workers so what is happening any diwali any christmas you make speech you go and share it with them any gossip that you want to talk you go and share it with your close friends why because at the end of the day become they become family to you and they become friends to you so that is what is called as informal communication there is no formal lines here this formal lines is broken and it's called as grape wine communication which is very very important for a one marker they may ask you so in how does a grape bunch go grape, grape bunch grows goes like this right it doesn't go in an order it goes so you can go from here to here you can you can communicate whichever way you want okay there is no restrictions that's given in an informal communication now what are the types of informal communication now let's start with single strand single strand communication means each tells one another that means again a b a goes to b b goes to c c goes to d a can even go to y okay b can even go to d anywhere you can actually go but you you will ensure that the information is passed on okay now what is gossip one tells all that means you have a person you have a person in your group who who cannot maintain secrets okay you tell him a secret and that particular person goes and publishes to everyone i'm sure you come uh, come across these kind of people so what happens here this is what is called as gossip communication but in single strand that is not the uh, that doesn't happen it happens how you how you know let's say you're a group of 10 you're a group of uh, 10 friends in a group okay so let's say sita tells meena one secret meena tells okay okay i will not tell anyone then meena tells reena one secret then reena tells let's say ravi one secret that's how single strand goes at the end of the day everybody knows how it works but in gossip one particular person ends up telling everybody so at the end of the day everybody knows that okay this person cannot keep secrets now what is his probability each randomly tells others that means what one tell, knows the secret one person tells the closest friend closest friend will say yeah okay fine i know i will not tell anybody probably that friend will not tell anybody else but that's where the disconnect is see b doesn't tell anyone b doesn't even know the information so what is happening whoever knows goes and tells one or goes and tells someone else and probably someone else who's listening to it is least bothered to go and tell anybody else so randomly people tell each other do you know i heard that there is no hike that's going to be given this year do you know that we are not going to have exams this year but i'm not sure of it so what is it randomly now what is clusters some tells selected others most typical that means you only tell your own group of friends and you say please don't tell this to anybody else okay that is what is called cluster i'm sure this these uh, diagrams which i have included for you it's pretty interesting and it will keep you motivated to study okay because um, i don't want to give you boring ppts we come to the conclusion of this particular elements of communicate sorry not elements of uh, communication directing and this is the last topic in the element of directing hope you are able to understand whatever i have taught you please ensure that you will let me know that which topic you did not understand and which topic you most understood really well any doubts i'm happy to go ahead and help you leave a comment in the comment section and i will be happy to help please like and please subscribe that is the way you're going to motivate me to teach you even more better thank you stay blessed